You know, and we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. And it is for the WWE Championship. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Championship. Hi there, folks. This is Mr. Green, and you are listening to the Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling here on the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. It's our little podcast. Um, there is a little bit of a change in format on this one today. I know uh, some of you come to either listen to the uh, particular talents that's out there on the independent circuit or you come to this channel to see the wrestling i know you'd like to see the wrestling and i promise you there will be uh wrestling to come in the near future we're recording matches uh currently but um the change of the format is this i want to share with you a uh a individual that i had the opportunity to meet and interview some years ago who's as big a fan of uh, the women's wrestling as we are, as I know you and all of you that that may be listening to this or browsing this channel would be. And he went out and uh, created a uh, an online web comic for it. It's Mr. Alan Evans. And uh, he's the creator of Rival Angels. Now, this interview that I'm about to play for you took, actually took place a couple of years ago uh, when I was hosting an entirely different podcast at the time. It was on comics and movies and pop culture and things like that and every once in a while I pop up on it but I thought that uh, it was it would be interesting to share that segment of the interview or that segment of the show with you here so if you hear me saying fanboys radio on that, on that particular one that is why it was because it was recorded so a little bit uh, I want to say mid 2010 and oddly enough, this guy, he is still pumping him out. He is still producing this comic. He still is very regular with it. I would suggest to any of you that uh, may enjoy that type of literature to uh, pop by RivalAngels.com. He has several years worth of uh, material there. He has great characters. Uh, and he puts a lot of time, a lot of heart, a lot of effort into it. And uh, you really should check it out. And I can't say it any better than what I probably said in the original interview and what the uh, creator is going to say and my co-host at the time, a young lady by the name of Kitty Ninja. So uh, take a listen to this interview, and uh, we'll be back. Hello, sir. Hey, how you doing? All right, is this Alan? This is. How you doing? Mr. The, Green. We are doing. That's right. You know, give you the grand intro, the creator of Rival Angels. Yes. Yes, thank you for having me on the on the show, it's great to be here. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful having you here. I was, you know, trying to track you down actually. You know, <laughs> and I had to go to your show page and you know get a hold of you through that way. But yeah, you, uh, you have a very fine comic, sir. Thank you. And I Thank thought you it would much. always be appropriate to ask you onto the show to discuss it. I'm glad that and you the, did. And the first thing I want to know is that, you know, uh, I brought this up with another gentleman not long ago, uh, I guess one of your writing colleagues, the creator of Headlock. Uh, yeah. Wrestling comics are, are not typically viewed as a mainstream item. How yeah. did you – yeah, how did you go about deciding that you wanted to do this topic? And not just that, you went a different route with it. Not only did you do wrestling, but you did a niche with – Female wrestling. Which well, I right. applaud, uh, by uh, the way. Oh, good, good. Um, well, yeah, I, I fully realize it, it's basically a niche of a niche. Um, you know, I was, I, was doing, I was doing something else. I was doing another project, and um, it was fun, but there wasn't a whole lot of, um, I guess, like excitement to it. And I thought, you know, what, what's, what's out there or what needs to be, be out there that's that's new 
and unique. And I thought, uh, and this was this was still before Mike came out with Headlock. He actually came out with it uh, that summer um, mm-hmm. before Rival Angels came out. So, um, okay. yeah, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, I've been a wrestling fan since um, since 1986, and I thought, you know, it's time that there's a uh, that there'd be a a wrestling comic, and and to me, I, I knew uh, I, I went with centering on um, on girls because I thought I just thought it'd be one I thought it'd be more interesting, and two of course that there is certain appeal. Uh, everybody likes girls, so I thought that that would that would take care of itself there too. So, but but, but mainly uh, I thought it'd be more interesting to read, uh, especially about four girls trying to make it in. Pro wrestling, as opposed to uh, as opposed to just having uh, a bunch of guys, because we we actually kind of have that with uh, well, we did have that say with Tough Enough, and mm-hmm. you know you kind of get that same flavor uh, week in week out between WWE and TNA. So um, I just thought it'd be a different way. No one's no one's at least done it here, uh, you know, because there's been a couple of uh, wrestling comics since. Mike started it all, but um, no one's in girls, so I'm happy to say that uh, I filled that uh, particular need. Yeah. See, you've carved out your own little uh, niche, as you say, you filled that need, and I have to say that it's an interesting blend of how you present the story, uh, that being that we all know the the curtain's been pulled back on wrestling, and we know what's going on behind it. So uh, it's not a complete shoot, but yet the book is kind of like, all right, this is a shoot. But behind the scenes, there are certain politics that, that take place that kind of set people into the positions that they are, uh, not necessarily always based on talent. Sometimes it's marketability, your, your ability to sell T-shirts or pay-per-views or what have you. Will will place you in the top position, and uh, I thought that was interesting that you were able to do that in in the course of that book. Well, you know, it was it was something I had to I had to decide right away when I did it. Am I going to make this? Am I going to make this? You know, choreographed like like it is on on television, or do I want to go um, a little more realistic? Um, and I decided to go the more realistic route just because I I think. There's drama either way, but we we do know week in and week out that it, it is choreographed. There's there's really no mystery there. So I decided to play it more like MMA, where you know there's there's you know you, you got your you got the business side of it, and you see that with their own reality show, um, The Ultimate Fighter, where mm-hmm. you know it's not always um, the most talented guys. It's it's the names, it's the it's the personalities that bring it, and there was a point too where I was going to maybe do a girls MMA league, but you know, there's just something about pro wrestling, the theatrics of it, the, you know, the over the topness, you, you just can't find it anywhere else. And I thought, no, it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be pro wrestling. It's gotta be girls. And I, we have to approach this from the, uh, from the, from the view that it's real, that these girls, you know, not only are they getting hurt and stuff, but it's not, it's not uh, predetermined. So, and on top of that, you have to worry about um, marketability because there's there's uh, there are there, one of the girls is already finding out that she has all the talent in the world. Not a whole lot in the personality department, but she's still getting overlooked for the uh, pretty blonde girls that uh, that know how to connect with the audience. So it's not not necessarily a good or a bad thing. I mean, obviously it's bad for her, but. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta play the game. I think that yeah. that whole take on it makes it easier to relate to it, though, because you know we all everybody wants to just forget about wrestling. No, it's all fake, but it, it's not fake. It might be choreographed, but it's still real. I mean, they still have to train, and like you said, they still have to get their name out there and fight with everybody else. And you know that that same fight of being marketable exists in any industry, whether it's you know accounting or games or wrestling or acting so I, I think it was a good decision because it, it just makes it really easy to to relate with the characters and get personally invested in the story 
Oh, fantastic. Woo! I know I did right then. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you see, Yay. you got big thumbs up there, uh, Kitty. Plus, you know, plus girls, you story. know, designing girls' costumes, that just must be more fun anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Drying yeah, them out. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, you know, um, that's, that's, you know, that's just, you know, the icing on the cake, you know, and c- certainly the research, you know, because there's a, quite a bit of research that has to go into it. You know, I sometimes I don't want to do it, you know, looking at, you know, pictures and dozens and hundreds of pictures of girls in different outfits. <laughs> like, you know, someone's got to do it. And, you know, uh, I, I know that hard work will pay off. So. Cause it might as well be you, right? <laughs> right. Cause you, you have some, uh, some con appearances coming up. Pardon me? Do you have any appearances coming up, any con appearances, you know, like oh, Comic-Con uh, or? Sure. Um, let's see. There's there's gonna be a couple in the fall. There's gonna be Wizard World Chicago in mm-hmm. uh, uh, the third week of August. Then there's going to be a Fall Con. It's a one day show in Minneapolis, and I believe that's in October. And then Mid Ohio Con, the I believe uh, November sixth and the seventh. So. Um, I'm, Trying to get into Dragon Con. I've never been there yet. Hear great things about it. Um, but you need to go. We'll show you that, around. That's the person to talk to right there, Kitty. <laughs> Wait, I, I'd love to go. I like I said, I hear great things about it. Um, but I hear uh, it's a tough, tough gig to get into, at least initially. <laughs> so I, I got, I got my, I got my application in. Um, they got mm-hmm. it, and uh, you know, just. Waiting on a, a year or nay, but they say yes, then I'll I'll definitely be there. I believe that's um and that's what Labor Day weekend, the third to the sixth. Yes, so. that's, that's correct. Labor Day weekend, 2010 Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Quick quick plug for them. And if you make right. it, you need to let us know because we'll okay. definitely be there. Oh, that'd be fantastic. right. Well, you, you already uh. Kind of dedicated to putting on a wrestling outfit, uh, I think for the, for headlock. You gonna do uh, Rival yeah. Angel too? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I now, you now could... I really have to get this wrestling outfit together. Yeah, I think you could pull off the uh, dragon, you know, outfit, the green and white. You already got the long black hair I'm for it. So. I am. I'm gonna do a luchador. Uh, oh, okay. Well, there, there you go. I'm gonna be a you wear the mask? My own. Yes. I can design my own character and everything. Awesome. I'm gonna make my mom do it too, cause she's Mexican, so I'm just gonna make her do it. She's still saying she's Luchadora tag team. Yeah. <laughs> they, Pretty good. They look. You're providing extra inspiration. You might might wind up as a comic book character yet. Oh, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I fit the mold. There haven't been very many parent and and child tag teams, but there's been a few over the years, so you you might be able to add to it. It will be the smallest ones too, because she's I think smaller than me. So, but we can hold our own. Size doesn't always matter, you know. Um, but you're feisty. If you're fast, and yeah, if you're fast and feisty and don't hold back, then. Yeah, right yeah. on. Now, now let me uh, ask about your your other project here, the Dreamer. Oh right, right. Um, Lauren does this uh, beautiful web comic, uh, the Dreamer. It's uh, mm-hmm. www.thedreamercomic.com. It's printed through IDW. You can um, you can try and get the single issues or the trade paperback, but it's sold out. Uh, Laura and I have been buddies for a few years, and I uh-huh. asked her, I could do a side story. And she said, sure. And she said she had a story um, um, just in mind for that. And so this summer I'm going to... It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be. Uh, shoot, it's gonna be between seven and ten pages. I think something like that. And um, it's gonna be something. Hopefully, we have for the convention season this fall. Um, so written by her, illustrated by me, and it's gonna be a nice, um, nice addition to the body of work that is the Dreamer. Yeah, I was gonna say it. It looks beautiful. You know. I've been, I will go ahead and say that now. And uh, for those that haven't had the chance to see the site, uh, the dream, 
Comic.com. It is spelled exactly how it sounds. And you can get your quick glimpse of that. Uh, of course, you just said that the whole graphic novel sold out. And and that's the other thing. Bo- both of your digital comics are available for purchase for yeah. the, if you want to keep a physical copy of it. You know, uh, as long as, as I like wrestling, I like comic books too. So um, me personally, if there is a web comic that I really enjoy, I'll always get the print because it's just a lot handier to 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 read. Uh, I, I love reading web comics online, but if I have to read more than say ten pages in a row, I don't know. I just mm-hmm. I get bored or tired or whatever, and I just just <laughs> just rather just read it in my hands. So that's oh that's yeah, no, it's for me. I completely agree. If you give me the choice, I would prefer the paper edition. Yeah, I find a lot of people are like that too. So. I know, you know, that 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 turns into a rare. Not everybody likes that anymore. But I still. That's kind of the fun of sitting in the comic book store and seeing all the art and covers. I do both personally as well. So I like having the options. So so many people just give you one option or the other, and sometimes you do want both. Yeah. You have your days when you're on the train and you have nothing to read, and then you have the days when you're drinking your coffee and you want to hold the book. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was um, for both reasons is the reason why, um, you know, I knew I could reach a bigger audience if I did it online. And I also knew that there's people that would want, you know, the souvenir edition, so to speak. So that's why um, the win win for everybody. That's right. I want a souvenir edition. I'm going to go on there and grab one myself. I, uh, between everything that I've read, I guess that breaks down into two different books, correct? I, I did put out my second book uh ooh, just probably what two months ago. This is uh it's for uh C two E two, the big comic show in Chicago and I think that was like the second second weekend of April and I got the books just in time and uh Oh so yeah, it's, okay. the second book is me. And as you say that I'm looking at the picture of you guys at uh C2E2. Ah, uh, yes. Good times, good times. <laughs> Standing directly in front of the band of survival angels and the dreamer. Yes, and and yes. you, you have an iPhone app for uh, rival angels as well? Yes, it's, it's true. Um, if you got an iPhone, you like rival angels, it's, you know, it's like chocolate and peanut butter. Really? I'm going to look it up right now, literally. <laughs> I've got the phone in my hand huh? as usual. That's right. She's our resident Matt girl. See, I love this. It makes it easy. I appreciate people that make it because you do. I mean, sometimes you want to find stuff or read stuff, and, you know, by making it easy, it almost adds to the whole appeal for it because, you know, it's it's obvious that you think of the consumer as well. uh, You know, I'm all about getting into the, the hands of the people that want it. Well, I am about to download this app right now. <laughs> and uh, before I, I forget, there was one other thing that you brought up to me in the course of the email that you have, a, I guess, a future project starring a a uh, current star, indie star, cheerleader Melissa, who some of us know or knew as Alyssa Flash on TNA. Yeah. Yes. Hey, man, uh, I, I, I do my homework, brother. Right on, right on, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, she is my favorite wrestler. Uh, she's, mm-hmm. she's, you know, such a badass in the ring and so cool outside the ring. Um, I was a Cindy Rogers fan myself, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, throw that in there. Cindy Rogers is cool. Um, yeah, man. But, um, yeah, so um, she's uh, she works um, – with a uh, chick fight and the female fight league. And I was talking to someone associated with that. And it basically was like, Hey, I, you know, I know cheerleader most is your, your favorite wrestler, you know, we should do something. So, um, you know, it's, uh, basically, uh, we thought about me doing a, a short comic, um, like four to six pages or something like that. Um, she, you know, they put it up on their side, they put it up on my side. So 
website, and you know it's win-win. Um, and we're, we're still kind of in the early stages of that, so I can't really say when it'll be out or done. But I know it's a lot of fun. I got to do the you know the character designing, and that was just woo fun. And uh, <laughs> that, I know uh, they dug it, so it's just a matter of um, it did a couple of things like where we're going to go with the story and like who she's going to fight and what's going to happen that sort of thing but that I mean that's fun stuff that, you know the hard part was making sure I could nail the likeness so you know everything else is just going to be gravy and uh, I really can't wait for that to come out well you have to let us know man if, when that hits or me specifically yeah, I, got, I got to know about that one absolutely I'll email you uh, they, it, it, just, just keep me in your, your roller decks and tell me it's out, and I will put to I turn blue. Awesome. <laughs> yes. So now, now let me here's the recap. We have Rival Angels, which you can see at rivalangels.com. With the Dreamer comic, which is at thedreamercomic.com. And you have... Uh, Full pages, you can purchase both of them. Well, I guess the Dream is sold out right now, but in the future you'll be able to purchase it. Uh, for you wrestling fans out there, he has the future project with cheerleader Melissa. Uh, and, again, for those that may not know, she was Alyssa Flash in TNA. Also, also Raisha Saeed. Yes. <laughs> but no one, nobody remembers her for that. She just disappeared. Yeah, just, just the hardcore marks. No, uh, remember remember that time, but yeah, she was cool. That was that was a that was a cool gimmick. Oh yeah, so he's had a good time. And too bad that they don't do what they used to do. I'm I'm a little disappointed actually. The women's oh. division is uh cracking up yeah. a little bit over there, but now I'm digressing. But but they do have the the women's MMA. Like you said, they show it on what Spike. I watch it regularly. It's not the same. Well, they do, show, and, and but. And they have some women's MMA on Netflix, so you know, again, you know, every every week I say something about Netflix, but it is uh, one DVD that you can stream instantly on Netflix. I forget the name of it. I'm sorry, but it is a full card of a uh, female MMA. Uh, is it uh, Me Strike Force or uh, Bulldog? No, I know it's not Bulldog. Okay, but. Uh, but, you know, now that I brought it up, I'm probably going to have to look at it and, so I can <laughs> mention it by name the next time I'm on there. So, yes. Yeah, yeah there's and some girls on there that are, you know, they're like tiny little trains. They're just ready to knock the next girl down, and they're tiny, and I love watching all that stuff. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Something to see. And, and I know that... uh. If he's like me, he's he's watched TNA when they first introduced their knockout division. It was great, but and Alan, I'm, I could probably nerd out and talk about the uh, knockout division with you for another hour or so because I, I you know I have some strong opinions about it now. And it, I have one not where it used to be. Lucky What's at that? your iPhone app and adding the Imperial March to one of your comic pages, you just earned another twenty points or Yay. hundred. Points. Thank it's you. here, it's here, Mr. Green. YouTube linked Imperial March to the comic. Hey, well, that, that's awesome. Star Wars fan, by the way. <laughs> yes, he is. Kitty is all over Star Wars. And Alan, this is this one's for you. Just the same way as I ran it for uh, Mike with Headlock. We've added the Russell says theme music as, as the outro because I'm pretty sure that most of the Big wrestling fans will always remember this game with fond memories. Is that the one with the, um, uh, what is that, the, uh, uh, Fight Ayabusa and, uh, the, the, uh, um, oh. Uh, you know, oh, you, you going, you're going back a little bit further. That's, uh, Nintendo Pro Wrestling. Oh, okay. Fight Ayabusa, Starman, Dying Panther. Wrestling. Oh, you said Russell Fest. Uh, yeah, Russell Fest. WrestleFest, all right. That's right. That, that was the LOD back there, just talking Ooh, it up. Right on. <laughs> That's right. You know, I forgot to put in Hell's Bell so we could uh, play you out with your uh, with your uh, <laughs> evil trio. 
And their theme yeah, music. Yes. Uh, and and, and, I, and spoiler, they're coming soon. What? They're coming soon? They're coming. They're going to be showing up very soon. Okay. I'm, I'm looking yeah. for it. I'm reading it every week. Well, and, and I I will certainly be in touch about it. Thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you, Alan. We, we certainly appreciate that. And if everybody that's listening, go check out RivalAngels.com and TheDreamerComic.com and keep your ears open for the Cheerleader Melissa Project. We'll just leave it at that. I do want to thank you for uh, calling us up and granting this interview. It's my pleasure, Mr. Green, Kitty. You guys are the greatest. And, and you, you're welcome to come back. Definitely. <laughs> you leave leave, leave the open the door for you. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Costumes. Wrestling costumes. <laughs> It'll be great. If, if I can see you guys in Atlanta, it'd be great. Okay. No, we will be there. We will be there for sure. Very good. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you guys, too. Bye-bye. Bye. That was the interview with Alan Evans, creator of Rival Angels, the web series. You can see that upload every Monday and Wednesday at RivalAngels.com. Be sure to check him out. He's uh, he's still cranking out the comics and still appreciates the support. Uh, just like we appreciate your support for coming on to this YouTube channel, checking us out on Blog Talk, finding us on iTunes and various other venues. Uh, please continue to do so. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to our channel and like the videos it is what keeps us going knowing that uh there is an audience out there helps us get out there and shoot these shows and get this, these podcasts in and all sorts of the other things that we are attempting to do to uh, further the wpn and i certainly want to thank those that have done it and those that come back regularly and those that are new to it thank you very much uh just be sure to uh Engage with us a bit. Hit the subscribe button. Let us know you're there. Uh, also, uh, as I stated at the beginning of this, there are new matches currently being shot. So uh, you should see some more of your favorites upcoming. Some that you may be introduced to for the first time. Some that you might not be necessarily familiar with, such as uh, the Black Widow, Brianna Call. Uh, uh, you, you're probably aware of individuals like Jordan Grace and Devin Nicole at this point. But uh, we're, we're still looking around. We're still trying to find some people. The whole point of this channel is to uh, introduce you to and, and help uh, support our women wrestlers that's out there on the circuit. Uh, the ones that don't have the power of a WWE or a Shine or a Shimmer or a TNA or whatever behind them. Not just yet, at least. So, you know, we try to get them out there so they can get, get a following as well. And maybe, who knows, maybe they will be able to get to the those big shows. And, uh... Perhaps our help and our support will help further that along. Thanks a lot for listening to this podcast. Be sure to come back for future podcasts and uh, future matches. Uh, we will be here, and I believe there is a revamping of some old footage that is being uh, taken care of right now in our in our editing suites. So hopefully we can get that out to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot, guys, for listening to it. To listening to this show, listening to this podcast, however uh, old it may be. Uh, again, we appreciate it. And uh, we will be back. So, you guys take care. Check us out on the uh, future stuff. If you haven't seen all of our videos online, be sure to browse through the archives. There's good stuff there. Take care, guys. <laughs>